Hi everybody, this is Kenpo Joe, known to many of you on the internet, again, and the martial arts world, Joe Rubello. I'm here to go over a particular aspect that I wanted to detail out today. Uh, recently, I was uh, looking at a, a Facebook uh, page uh, known as Vintage Nunchaku, and in that, the gentleman who is now living in Iowa, congrats on the move, uh, he was showing a particular Nunchaku, and he's a nunchakuologist, as he likes to refer to himself, so I'm giving a plug out to him. And um, we're talking about various types of nunchaku and various weapons, etc. And I wanted to take one particular technique that I knew from the Hawaiian Kempo system and Karazempo Goshen Jitsu and Shaolin Kempo and all that orientations and show you how to apply with this indigenous weapon and other weapons as well. So with my assistant, come on over, Aaron. Again, this is my assistant. Aaron Jakes, and Aaron's going to be assisting me in today's video. And Aaron, I'm going to have you come on over here for a moment. And the first thing we're going to work on today is we're going to be focusing on a particular technique that comes from the Hawaiian Kempo, Karazempo Goshen Jitsu, Shaolin Kempo orientation. It's known as combination number 16. It's a series of originally six, uh, 26 combinations were expanded to 30, and then later expanded through the Shaolin Kempo of 108. But the original base system had only 26 techniques in it, and this is one of them. And we're going to detail it out for you right now. So again, what's going to happen here is this is one of the only techniques that utilizes a particular given weapon. And that weapon is dun, 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 the belt, popularly known in Japanese as the obi. And I was just watching a gentleman, Christian Martinez. He was just doing a belt snapping drill that's done in judo. It's also done in shui jiao. And it's a very important uh, drill. And in the drill, it teaches you how to snap the belt in various sides and angles and whatnot. And this is an important ingredient in regards to this particular given technique. So what we're going to have to do is salute, sir. Uh, right foot back, left fighting stance. You're going to step through with a right hand punch. Now, Aaron does not know this technique, so I'm going to do it slowly at first. As Aaron punches, I'm going to snap the belt out of the way. I'm going to knock it down as I execute a back to knuckle punch to his face. And then I'm going to snap it right across his face, striking him in the face. And then I'm going to loop it across his neck. I'm going to take my right hand, punch underneath, and I'm going to choke him out. Later on, I'm going to roll him and throw him over my shoulder or roll him diagonally like a hip throw. But that's our basic foundation. So now that you know what's going on, I'm standing here and move and snap, hit, whip, slap, whip, it. Did I get it up on higher in his face? Did I make it a cross face? Did I kind of tell him to be quiet as I threw him instead of choking him in the throat? That's okay. We'll get back to that in a minute. So that's basically combination number 13. Now, that being said, there are other weapons that you can do this with. And by the way, I'm dedicating this entire episode to Bear Brand Martial Arts. Matter of fact, I'm wearing a Bear Brand. You're not going to believe this. This Bear Brand uniform is from 1981. And for one reason or another, I never wore it. And recently I was digging through my 147 plus uniforms and I happened to find it still in the packaging, never worn. So it's brand, it looks brand spanking new, but 1981, 91's 10, 2001's 20, 2011, 30, 30 plus, wow, 37 to 38 years old. Whew, that's an old uniform, looks pretty good. But um, he also created uh, several other different weapons, and we're going to demonstrate and show some of those. And one of them, let's see here. Not that yet. Over here. Ha. At one point, he made several different types of Manriki Gusari in uh, the Bujinkan ninjutsu tradition. You'll hear it as Kusari Fundo. He made these in gold plating, or like a brass plating to make it look like gold. So again, if you feel this, where are you, Aaron? Aaron's taking off his glasses. He lives in fear of the Manriki Gusari. Smart move! So, I have Aaron open up his hand, and I go, right, they're that heavy. When I got these, I was like, wow, these are heavy. And again, that, that one foot length between them. So very similar to a nunchaku. So again, that same technique, I'm here, he goes in the punch, and suddenly move, whack! And I 
I use that snap. Now I can take this pommel and I can hammer it into his forearm as I punch him in the face. Now I strike him right across the face. And I loop it over his head and I bring it right across his neck. Right, and he's already in bad shape. I'm sorry, come on with me. Come with me, come with me. See this over here? Hurts like hell. Doesn't take much. All of the, you want to see the cool part? All I have to do, I'm going to relax. And now I'm going to inhale. <laughs> exactly. Nasty. And remember, this is metal. So after that point, I take him and throw him. And then I figurate him and let him have it. Oh, you didn't see that? Over here. I figurate him down. I let him have it. Boy, that's pretty nasty. But now, the best is yet to come. So I was talking to my friend from Vintage Nunchaku and he found this Nunchaku and he put it on his Facebook page and I was like, hey, that's Bear Brand. And he was like, how do you know? Well, the way I knew, you'll know. And on the bottom of these are a pair of Woo, right there. Bear brand logos. And you can even read if you got a good enough TV or tablet or computer. Made in Korea. So, he took these Okinawan brand and nunchakus after the popularity of Fumio Demura's book, Nunchaku, The Art of Self-Defense. And he put these in and had these made. Now, why would these four sections be made? It's very similar to the multiple section whips that you see in Chinese martial arts, but now we go back to combination 13, and we're going to have a whole new greater insight into this. So now, now people say to me, well, if he was empty-handed, he really wouldn't be throwing a punch if you had a weapon. Yeah, I get that. He might have a knife in his hand. He might have another weapon. We're just having him move barehanded just for the sake of, our, of argument for this demonstration. Get it? Got it? Good. So here we go. So here I am in my position, or I might have my hands down, and he goes to punch me. And, new time today, whack, here's that strike. Wow, I would never wrap this around and cause him intense pain. Well, I could do that, but we're not doing that right now. So again, he goes out, pow, I'm going to push down with this and punch. Now again, I can have it flat forming the L, or I can push down with my arm and form this shape here, which is like, three quarters of an open box to drive his arm as I punch him in the face. And I snap this into his face. Now here's where the fun begins. Loop and cross. Now, I'm not gonna train, I'm not gonna choke or strangle Aaron. I'm gonna walk him up instead to the camera. I want you to pay careful attention how each one of the smaller rods is pressing directly upon his carotid artery and jugular vein. So when I'm here to do the throw, I can crank him right out. And now it's not just a choke, it's a strangle because there's pressure on his carotid artery and jugular vein on both sides of his neck. That makes it a strangle or a blood choke, as some people in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu will say. I'll let that off for a minute. Pretty wild, huh? Yeah. So again, block, hit, strike, flip, choke him out. Throw, wham, wham, wham. Whoop. Peek a boo. And the key ingredient is you can also compress these in one hand, small grip, fire out, circle strike. Numerous drills you can do with this wonderful device. And this is the four section Oyon Setsu. Nunchaku. Now, last but not least, you're going to step in with your right foot with a nice deep punch. So, I would never, ready to go, walk from here, go to here, hit him with the pommel, strike him across here, transfer it here, whoop, right up between the legs. Ain't that a nutcracker? You bet! It's got that extra reach, that extra length, and again, if he's coming in with like, he's going to stab me with a knife, I can trap it here, I can loop it around his head, knee him in the crotch, knee him in the thigh. He goes to punch me with that other hand. You don't want to punch me with that other hand. Watch, because if he does, I punch me. I loop it, trap it, and now we're in even more pain, more agony. Hey, you worried about that other hand? Pow, punch him in the face, and let him know, boom, no uncertain terms, 
Boom, boom, boom. Whack. Pull. Did you have fun with that? I know I did. So, there you have it. The use of the combination 13 from Karazempo Goshen Jutsu and Shaolin Kempo and Hawaiian Kempo. By the way, brand new belt. I'd like to thank Master Shin as well for doing this with the Thai Kempo Jiu Jitsu from David German's orientation and of course, Kempo Karate. Uh, really appreciate it, really thankful. He does great work again. BearBrandInc.com. Also check out East West Market Exchange in Chicago. Uh, again, contact them, get in touch with them. They're still in existence. They're still making great products. And now you've got some greater insights in some of the different items that they sold or do sell. You've got some interesting insight in the use of the four section nunchaku. You've got some interesting insight in the use of the Mariki Gosari. And uh, you've got some great techniques uh, with the assistance. And I got I to gotta really give it uh, again. Give a thank you to Aaron Jakes and all his work and all his study. And he's working very hard with me learning different systems of martial arts. And I'm very glad to have him as a student. So there you have it. Some great new insights into the martial arts. Until next time, this is Campo Joe. Keep training.